I thought this was supposed to be about stocks. Where? What's up, people? The reason I love this business so much and the reason I haven't given up yet and I've walked away four times, I've blown up my account three different times, the reason I keep coming back is that I believe I still know what I'm doing. And it's a day like this where I traded more. Okay, let's prep it before I even get started. Who the hell thought this day would be such an active day? Now, you look at the market. The Dow is down 47 and the NASDAQ was ending up flat. This is the best day I've had in 15 years. I haven't traded more so this profitable this many times back and forth, I got to say, in a good 10 or 15 years. Now, monetarily, we can't talk about the days where there was those $45,000 days or those 10 grand days, 20 grand days, the $100,000 days. Those things are a thing of the past. Trading 10,000 share blocks of $200 stocks that were going up 10 or 20 points in a day, those days are over. Now we're trying to grind it out and make what we can out of what we have. So that being said, unbelievable day. Came in thinking that, all right, I'm going to be very, very careful. I don't want to get involved in any stocks that I don't think are setting up to be extraordinary moves or you know, just setups that have to look perfect because I didn't think anything was going to be going on today. Who wants to be around trading on Thursday after a weekend? Most people have taken off all week. They're already looking toward the weekend. All that being said, turned out to be a monster day. Now, why was it a monster day? Because I went and did something I don't normally do. I came in already long Netflix, right? Because we loved it going into that. We loved it at 67 and a half. We didn't like that it didn't break 70 and a half about two or three weeks ago, but then it broke 70 and a half the other day, so we stayed long. Next thing you know, stocks moving in the pre-market. Whether the news is whatever you want to make of the news, we don't care. We don't care where Netflix is going a year from now, whether the subscriptions are picking up, whether the number of people are watching, streaming is increasing. Are they the new network? Are people enjoying Netflix in the summer more than they do in the winter? Are they spreading to Europe? None of that matters. All we need is a catalyst to get the short squeeze going. The first people to cover the short are the last people that just shorted it or get long. First people in, first people covering are the last people that short it. You know what I'm trying to say. So we got involved in the pre-market. Next thing you know, this thing's getting to $75. No chance in hell I'm hanging on to any more of this at $75. It's at every price target I thought. But when it broke 75, my immediate thought was thing was going back to 80. Tried to chase it, never got back in. Who cares? We already made the money on Netflix. Thank you very much. So Netflix represents the kind of stock that I love to trade. Stocks that have gotten destroyed and you could see your risk reward right in front of your face. So we're talking about stocks like GMCR. We're talking about FSLR. And today we got back into the racks. And of course, there's the O-R-L-Y. And then the list goes on and on. We had Lulu. We had MCP. We had WLT. Even the WIN. Even the LVS. Trading more names than I ever thought I would be trading today. The Bed Bath, the Bed Bath and Beyond. Trading the Facebook. And then we traded the Cree. What is the same out of all these stocks? If you take a look at that list, and I'll throw them up there for you. They've all been destroyed, and they're all trying to find some support. I call it the exhaustion situation formation. Stocks that have gone down and are now bouncing along in a little tight channel waiting for a catalyst. I don't know what the catalyst was in DEC or Lulu today. I don't care. I'm in. Getting involved. I don't care what the catalyst is on Shield. I'm in. I want to be a part of it. Even if it's 100 or 200 shares. Today was a perfect example of how to make money in this market. Play the breakout with a full amount. Let's say 1,000. And then if the stock still goes your way, sell most of it and hang on to that last two, 300 shares and try to milk it for what you can. That's the only reason I'm in the Netflix. That's the only reason I was still in the GMCR because I believe all these stocks have now turned. And that's the only reason we were loving this Google. How many times can Google go down to 557, 559 without believing that that's the bottom? And then you wait for the turn. Next thing you know, you get a 40 point move, 40 points.
Now the question is, where do we go from here? Does it matter? Are we looking at these stocks as recoveries? Doesn't matter. Our day's done. The only thing we own right now is GMCR. We don't own Netflix. We don't care about any of these stocks right now. And I could go to sleep thinking, who cares what happens tomorrow, whether or not the jobs report is good or bad. If the market gaps up huge tomorrow, I'll be disappointed that I didn't hold anything. But at the same time, after such a monumental move, after May's destruction and the June surprise, are we really going to tack on that much more going into July? I think we're going to be having, we're, we're, we're going to have to take a breath on the job report unless it's a monumental number that just pleases everybody. Now, the jobs report, I think, is going to please everybody in a way because if the jobs report is bad, that means the Fed has to act and we're going to have to implement more easing and the market's going to go up because there's going to be the government supporting it. And that's kind of the reason why we like the stock market right now. The downside is limited because the market will always be the government's there to protect us. Hello. When the Fed did whatever it did, remember? And then the EU did whatever they did. And all the things, all the, all the mess that's out there, we pushed it aside. So you have to imagine. All right. They pushed it aside, let's buy stocks. Don't have to worry about anything right now. Here's the thing. You're only worried if you're swing trading. If you're intraday trading, all you do is look for these pivots. When the market starts to go back up, you can enjoy it. Not every day is gonna be as easy as today. Why was today easy? Because every level that the stock broke Nothing was, there was no resistance. Stock broke a whole number, you got follow through of 20, 30, maybe 50 cents. You chased, you chased uh, Netflix at 75, you were rewarded. You chased Lulu at 60, you were rewarded. You chased Lulu at 59, you were rewarded. You chased Shield at 60, you were rewarded. Sometimes those whole numbers become resistance and or sometimes we get follow through and then it just retraces and just sits around and does nothing all day. But today we had follow through, we had momentum, and whether it be low volume, small volume, doesn't matter. We had it, it was happening, and when the going is good like it was today, you just keep pushing. I never trade this much, but every trade I did kept following through, so I had to. I would never trade win, W-Y-N-N. I'm over my life in that stock. Even though I'm right about it, every time I put my money in it, sometimes I, most of the time I'll lose money. But today I was like, you know what? I'm gonna even trade win. LVS, never trade these stocks. Boom, boom, get involved. Next thing you know, we're off to the races. When everything's working, you just keep on pushing. When the dice are hot, you keep throwing them. And then when they get cold, you walk away. But the dice was so hot today that even after making all this money on the long side, we were able to short stocks like the ORLY, like the Bed Bath & Beyond, like the MCP, even the WLT. And if we were able to short soda, we would have made money on that too. It's a very rare occurrence where the comings and the goings and the highs and the lows and the buying and the selling, they all come together and everything's working for you. And the thing what we do on the radio broadcast is you're hearing us talk about these ideas live and you could participate. And that is how you learn. You learn from why we're getting into these trades, why we like these trades, what price we're getting in them, why we're selling them, and what we expect even after we get out. You get to know what is what. And that's it. And it's all coming together right now. Guess, walking, the VWAP kid, everybody's coming together and we're having a really good time. And the only way to really truly experience it is to be there. And if you're a trader that's sitting at your desk all day, and this is what you do, I got up three times today to go to the bathroom and, and get a drink. I never thought this would day would be one of those days where I was gripped by the market. But if you're that guy that's sitting at your desk all day and you want someone to trade with, don't trade alone. Come to Hit The Bid radio broadcast and be a part of the family. And just ask people what they've witnessed because the best people to tell you what's really going on are people that experienced it. Because me talking about it could be just a bunch of bullshit to you. So hopefully everybody had a great holiday week, day, day off. Enjoy the rest of your night. I'll be back tomorrow. I'll be back all the time. And I think 
what this process has done for me as a trader is that as I'm talking out my trades, it forces me to be more disciplined and at the same time, helping you, it's helping me. Help me, help you, help you, help me, all that stuff. All right, I hope that you could withstand a 10 minute video every once in a while, I think today warranted it. Uh, and loving the Google, still love the Google, buying it on all pullbacks. Uh, I think the number is gonna be great, but again, no point guessing what a stock's gonna do 10 days from now. We act in the moment, and that's what it's all about. I do believe I still like GMCR on the long side. I still like the Google on the long side. The only thing I own right now is the GMCR and a little Pandora. Just, I don't know, I got stuck in the Pandora. I still own the Pandora, the big P. All right, kids, I'll see you on the broadcast tomorrow. Thanks for being here today. Enjoy your night.